Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be. My name is Brianna Chapman, and I am the Instruction and Scholarly Communications Librarian at Marymount University. Thank you for joining me today for my presentation. We will be overviewing creating a sustainable OER practices, and we're going to get started. I do have limited time, so I want to make sure that I hit everything um, that, you know, that I want to share with you guys today. Alrighty, so today we're going to be covering institution and infrastructure challenges. We'll also be talking about how do you move forward in the face of adversity when you are dealing with these challenges. And I want to land with sharing just, you know, creating sustainable practices that I think any librarian, any institution um, could use and incorporate into their daily practices. So starting with one of the first challenges I encountered um, website blues. So to give some background, I'm an early career librarian. Um, this is my first official position outside of library school. When I graduated library school, I was an NLM associate fellow. And from there, um, I did a second year of the fellowship where I was fortunate enough to get some real live um, library experience. Now, with that being said, I'm still early in my career. So there are a lot of things, what we like to call growing pains in librarianship. So as I transitioned into my academic role at Marymount, um, I was given you know, a lot more responsibility. And one of those responsibilities um, was being our go-to person, the expert on OER on our campus and how we can implement it with our faculty and how it can reach our students. My predecessor had created a OER website. Um, this website was extremely extensive. It held some of the OER works that faculty had worked on. It served as a guide to OER um, for our faculty and for students. And it kind of just kept everyone up to date on everything that was OER. Now, this website did give us a little bit of trouble because we encountered issues. So the first issue is that when the website was created, it was created in conjunction with a faculty member and their graduate assistant. As we know, university life can change quickly. The graduate assistant graduated and the faculty member actually retired. So the issue we ran into is who actually owns the website and who has the admin logons. Um, that gave us a run for our money for a couple of months where we had to really sort that out. Also, we ran into issues of who will maintain or pay for the website maintenance? Our university has transitioned from a Google campus to a Microsoft campus. So a lot of the, the neat things that we had, we no longer have because we're not paying for those services. And then also too, we had to deal with spam attacks um, through the contact box. That was something that you know we had to also try to figure out. And another, um, important aspect of this is we dealt with a lot of outdated information and broken links. My position had been vacant for some time. So that website again had not been updated because it plays back into the part of who actually admins this website. We also ran into uh, a few other issues. Um, so we had programs that were in motion. So some programs that had been set in motion um, that I was now jumping into the role of having to be the go-to or contact person. One of the biggest things that I ran into was that we had two textbook review stipend programs, but they were ran by two different organizations. So there were two different pots of funding. The first organization is the WROC, so the Washington Research Library Consortium that we're a part of, and then VIVA. Virginia's Academic Library Consortium. They have similar programs because they both really believe in OER and really want that to expand out on, you know, the campuses in our local area. So for me, it was having to figure out who's who and both organizations have dealt with reorganization and people coming and people going. So again, trying to figure out who's who in exactly how is this funding supposed to be um, allocated when they're the same program but ran by two different um, organizations. Another thing that um, I also found challenging was being a committee member on committees where everyone was new. And for me, 
Um, that just proved challenging because, again, I'm an early career librarian. There are other people that, you know, were also on the committee that have been like, hey, I've been a librarian for 20 years, but this is my first introduction to OER. How do we want to see this committee move forward? Um, what are the things that we are already been tasked with? Um, so really having to jump in there. And then lastly, um, my first year uh, having to help pilot a program um, for faculty course uh, transformation. So essentially uh, faculty members applying for this grant that will allow them to transform their classrooms in regards to um, selecting a open um, educational resource um, as you know the material for their classroom. So open um, open textbook. So I kind of named some of the issues that I encountered and you're probably wondering, okay, you've named a couple of things, but how exactly did you move forward? And for me, I want to start with, you know, dealing with the website blues. So for me, it was having to do the groundwork. And this, again, again this did not happen overnight. As we say, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, but I had to do the groundwork to figure out how this website was one, even built, and two, who were who was all on the project of this website being built. And so what I was able to do was get the admin responsibilities transferred to myself and our systems librarian, but also looking towards the future, making sure that all admin logins were under the general library information. It may seem very small, but when you were working on it, you know, a new project, you're like, okay, like, you know, let me create everything. And it's under your login information. And you may, you know, leave or move positions. Um, and you have to worry about like, oh, now I need to transfer this over to someone else. No, now we don't have to do that because it's now under the general library information. Next, it was having to sit through and go through every single page and do a manual website cleanup. So that means I had to fix all the broken links. I had to update all the web pages. And I just had to correct um, our contact information. Our contact information was showing the previous librarian in my position. Also, in understanding that this website may not exist because it was deactivated by our, um, our, by our IT department, but they gracefully have allowed us to have our website back for now. It's not permanent, um, but transform our OER research guide to be um, more interactive to have all the information that we need and also to start thinking long term about how are we archiving the work um, of faculty participating in creating original OER material um, that they can use and others can use and that students can access. So right now we are using the OER research guide and we're keeping that updated um, and we're directing all our traffic to that OER research guide until we can get a little bit more direction um, from our university in regards to how we can um, have a website and possibly uh, have our website built into the library's website. Um, so now that it has some governance from the university itself and it's not you know, um, dependent on a website host that we may or may not stick with or not stick with. And then moving forward in regards to programs in motion, one thing that I had to do, um, and this is really big, but is, be accountable and just take responsibility for everything that's happening. If I am the only librarian that is dealing with OER, then I have to be the expert. And I know that sounds crazy, but a lot of us are either solo librarians or, you know, we are the only liaison or expert in a certain area in our libraries. But for me, I had made sure that I did a crash course on everything OER, everything I could possibly think for OER. I made sure that um, I did the webinars. I talked to other librarians. I did the literature readings. I wanted to make sure that I was knowledgeable. And then also, too, I had candid conversations with those in charge about expectations. So how was I supposed to fit in, um, you know, the university life? of how do you see me, you know, engaging with faculty in OER? How do you see me engaging in regards to the committees that I now have to sit on that solely deal with OER? Um, having those candid conversations will take out all of the confusion. And again, just taking ownership of the roles I would now fill. So for example, like I mentioned earlier, um, 
with, you know, the pilot program that I was a part of, it wasn't just me being the liaison or the representative um, for my faculty members that participated. Um, there were four faculty members that participated. I had the largest group out of um, all the institutions associated with that program. Um, but I, I was the person to help them find the literature, um, you know, organize, also deal with OER, digital accessibility. Um, there was a lot of different hats that I had to wear. And also, too, we did not have an admin. So not only was I the representative, the librarian, I was also admin, too. Um, so it was a lot to juggle. But once I had a clear picture of what role I needed to fill, it made everything easier. And also, too, I want to talk about this because it's so important, but identifying your stakeholders will also help you move forward. Um, if you are experiencing or have experienced some of the similar challenges I've experienced. Um, one thing that um, helped me was knowing that there was an OER working group. So faculty members and a few librarians out of my library um, that put together an OER working group to introduce OER to my campus. So my campus wasn't totally, you know, in the blue about, you know, what exactly is OER, but understanding they disbanded once they felt that, um, OER in the library is running well enough. Next is understanding that a lot of faculty that was involved, they retired or they left the um or they left the institution um, for different job opportunities. So understanding some of the projects that they worked on um, and some of the initiatives that they were wanting to bring to campus or they brought to campus and how I could revive those or make sure that they continued on. Um, that was really, really important for me because it helped me gauge how um, OER could impact my campus and how it already impacted my campus. And then also to introducing incoming faculty OER. Uh, we had a lot of new faculty that came in, a lot of new faculty that were new faculty. So new, you know, freshly graduated um, from their doctoral programs, finally getting out there and teaching full time. Um, so building those close relationships with them. And one thing I want to point out too, OER is so important to my campus because I'm at an HSI. And also too, it is one of the most diverse, uh, well, I believe number one um, diverse campus in Virginia. Um, so we have a lot of students from various backgrounds. So being able to introduce OER and alleviate some of that pressure of, you know, having to, you know, come to campus and worry about finances and textbooks and stuff. Um, we are trying to, you know, alleviate some of those pressures and, you know, help students in regards to being financially able to afford college, especially the textbook part of it. So the part we've all been waiting for is sustainable OER practices. Um, I believe that practices should be easy and um, you should be able to incorporate them into your everyday life. So first things first is do not be afraid to ask for help. And also don't be afraid to challenge the way things have been done. I know this seems very simple, but we've all been there where we're in a new role or we're in a role that we've been in and there's new responsibilities given to us. And it's just like, you know what? I'm not going to even ask. I'm just going to kind of do the thing they told me to do and just keep it moving forward. No, don't do that. Ask all the questions. Um, and if there's something you're like, this just does not seem productive, challenge it. What is a different way that you can do things to make sure that you're progressing things forward? Next is document everything. And I know it's easier said than done. We're always documenting stuff, always trying to keep track of stuff. But when you document things, it allows you to look back and it also sets you up for the future. If for any reason you, you know, move positions or you leave your institution, you want to make sure the person coming in is not starting from scratch. I was very fortunate that my predecessor was able to give me a timeline document of how they introduced OER on our campus and some of the projects that they were wanting to introduce and some of the projects they were able to introduce. So you don't want to start from scratch because it kind of sets you back. And then next, plan for long-term challenges. Quick fixes are great when you need a Band-Aid, but you need to plan for the future. So for me, I know that my research guide page um, for OER is a Band-Aid. Um, and now I am in the works of, you know, okay, what is the long-term solution and what does this look like for my library? So that's where it comes up of, okay, we may probably need to talk to IT about, about adding a page to our library website that is dedicated to OER and that is multi-page and that connects to different resources and also possibly building an archive. So all the material that 
our faculty are producing and creating has somewhere to live and is accessible to everyone on campus. Um, so I just want to leave off with saying thank you so much for listening. I hope these practices um, are beneficial to you and they help. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. And thank you so much for being here today.